Howdy guys, Dakota here with Kindle the Fire. Today, Rip and I are just out, just kind of looking around. We got this pretty little stream behind me. I don't know if you can see that, but just kind of hiking next to it, kind of seeing where it takes us today. Glorious, glorious, beautiful winter day. The sky is finally starting to open up. It was a little bit too dark to film a little earlier when we started out. The temperatures right now sitting about 30 degrees, maybe 29. It's a little bit below freezing. It's not bad though. There's uh, no snow coming down on top of us, so this is looking real good for us. So what I figure I'm going to go ahead and do today is we're going to go ahead and talk about my winter scout kit. Now y'all have seen my video before on the actual scout kit that I take out for the majority of the year. But I do carry a few different things for winter. I wear a few different things for winter. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that in this video. So right quick, a couple things that you'll notice that are a little different about my winter scout kit is first of all, not wearing that green canvas waterproof jacket. I'm wearing what we call a capote. Or you could pronounce it as a capote. Either way is from my research technically correct. Even though capote is correct French, a lot of the uh, mountain men who adopted the garment weren't uh, very fluent in French. <laughs> you can see we got a wool blanket on my back, poly tarp, and an axe. So this bedroll has on it my tump line is what I'm carrying it with. My tump line I keep just average traditional rope on it. Uh, I like that better than a lot of modern ropes because I can use that as emergency tinder if I can't find any and I need some. Um, I have just a uh, an army style but a little bit larger um, poly poncho shelter on here. Uh, I like that poly poncho shelter mainly because I've camped with it before. Uh, I probably won't be covering up like with it above me per se if I had to spend the night, which is why I brought it. Uh, but so that way I can build a mattress to lay on um, with boughs, leaves, uh, anything I can really find to help get me up off the ground. The wool blanket I have in here, this brown one, you've seen it in previous videos of mine. This brown one's a little bit bigger than a queen. It's almost a king, but just a few inches shy. And so I love this wool blanket. It's super, it's like that thick. It's, it's, it's awesome. I love the thickness on it. I've also got my forest ax in here. Um, this is just a, uh, a leather mask that I made a couple years back. It, it encloses the whole head, which I like a lot more. It's been weather treated. Um, I, I stole a trick from uh, Dave Canterbury's channel that I saw years ago when I got this knife and put uh, one inch marks along the back of it. And besides that though, it's been a, a fairly good ax for me. This is a Wetterlings. Normally now I'm a tomahawk guy. I, I always kind of have been, but in the winter time, I don't usually take a tomahawk. I don't like to mess around. I like something big, heavy that can get all my chopping needs done really quick. And I like the length of this. For those of you that don't know, uh, the, the proper way to size an ax to yourself is actually you tuck it in your armpit and you see if your fingertips can get over the end. And if they can get that distance, then it's properly good size to you for your swing. I also have in here this uh, mini squirrel cooker set that I really like. I got these at Mount Man Rendezvous up at Fort Bridger this past year. This set is actually really, really cool. Uh, I might shoot a video on this later where uh, it, it's just, it's a really fun kit if you're only taking out a cook cup and you don't need like a big old bush pot or anything like that. And it's super lightweight for the metal that it is. Uh, I like the fork, I like the curly cue, and then this is a nice like platform for your cook cup. So I might shoot a video on this in the future, I don't know. And also wrapped up in here, I don't know if you can see that tucking out there or not, I've got a thick wool sweater and a wool beanie cap that covers down over my ears. That's for if I have to spend the night out or if I'm out a little too late and I'm getting a little too cold. Those are some extra layers that I can go on and throw on myself and try and help regulate my body heat a little bit. So now I'll go ahead and I'll lay out that tarp and uh, we'll go through exactly what's on my belt kit. Some things have changed since the scout kit uh, that I take out normally. Uh, certain things there's a little bit more of, certain things are a little bit less of and everything, but you'll see the difference when I lay it all out. So as you can see, this is the kit that I'm taking out with me on my belt. Um, first off, 
just a folding saw. This is actually a, a Koglenz. Um, I used to have an open L folding saw. I lost it, sadly, a couple months back. I was, I was actually looking at getting a Baco Laplander, and then I saw a video review that somebody had on this Koglenz folding saw doing almost just as well as the, the Baco Laplander, if not right even with it. So I ended up actually testing it versus the Baco, and I actually liked it better. The Baco cuts on forward and back, but, and this only cuts on the backstroke, but I still liked it quite a bit. My only complaint is it doesn't lock close, but it has a nice lock open function that I like a lot better than the push button. You guys have seen my belt knife in the scout kit video, same thing with the sheath. Nothing's changed on that one. I still have my big ferro rod. I still have my matches and whistle and sharpener all right in there. This Pathfinder kit here though is a new item for me. Um, this was a present to myself. I used to have just this big old bush pod. I still have it, but I'm going to try and see how I like this one better. I've looked at it for quite a long time, uh, a couple years now, and I finally just decided to pop on it. So what I've got in this kit is I've got obviously the canteen itself. I have the fish hook hanger, the lid, and the cook cup. But stuffed in the bottom down here, I have just some, some uh, emergency lunch rations, whatever you want to call them. It's chicken bouillon and just a lot of dirty rice. Here I have wrapped up in a baggie is a little dropper full of bleach. I like to use bleach to purify my water. Boiling is not really a good option for me. Then over here I have five esbits stacked on each other. I have some cocoa and some coffee. In my belt pouch, I've just got small little leather baggie. This is just shot. This is a glass shot for my slingshot. Catapult for uh, those of you who know it by that. I've just got my, my tin that has char cloth, more char material, and some jute twine in there. One flexible magnifying glass. A cool wet fire, some aluminum foil. This foil is so that way if I get an animal and I want to kind of like roast it over the fire or for some reason uh, I don't have my canteen or anything to boil water with with me, this is enough that I can actually make a good sized bowl and actually boil water in that so I don't have to stone boil nothing. I got a comb, two big lighters. Parabolic burning lens. You guys have seen this before. And then just a beeswax candle. I don't really like sitting here, you know, pumping the, the Bic lighter and everything, trying to hold it under, getting a fire going. I'd much rather light a candle and have the candle light the fire. Besides that, I've just got a few extra pieces of shot in the bottom. I've got a few nails. This is for building a, a bit tougher shelter if I need to. That's wrapped up with some Gorilla Tape. And then also I have the metal ring. That's for a quick and dirty tripod if I need it or use it in conjunction with the nails and that'll make a nice blanket pin if I need to wrap my blanket around my body and pin it. Lastly, I have this nice market wall that I made. Um, I put a little toggle uh, belt loop on it that's going sideways on the back of here. That's so that way I can tie it to a bedroll if I'd like. Basically in the two parts that make up this main compartment up here I just have tinder that I've been keeping dry and in this back underside here I just have some rice, some bisquick, uh, two granola bars and a fig bar and some jerky. That's just some average food that I just kind of keep uh, for if I want it when I'm on a day hike. I don't always end up dipping into it. It's just for if I want it. I have my spear tip. I have my compass and I usually leave my ranger beads out of it so that way I can use them. Out of the market wallet I mean. I have some storm matches in this little slide case. And then tucked actually down inside to keep it more protected is my spyglass and you guys have seen that. 
I also keep my carved wooden spoon in, on an antler toggle in my front pocket, as well as my Openel jackknife. And you guys saw this in my scout kit video. I love this knife. It's great. Thank you guys very much for staying with me for this video over my winter scout kit. Hopefully it gave you a few ideas. Um, obviously I've changed some stuff around, but there's a lot of stuff that just stays constant for me. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can check us out on Facebook at uh, Kindle the Fire, and you can also find us on Instagram at Kindle the Fire Utah. Anyways, I'm Dakota. As always, thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.